If you live in the southeastern United States like I do, there's a good chance you've been stung by a fire ant. Given how common fire ant stings are, I was surprised at how hard it was to find detailed videos of stinging behaviors online. So I study ants, and I use videos a lot to do it. So I decided to see if I could capture the details of fire ant stings and other behaviors on film. This fire ant worker is on my finger. Her sting starts with a bite. The worker sinks her mandibles into my skin, then she starts to probe around for a place to insert her stinger. Okay, wait, hold on. This is my favorite part of the video. I wanna make sure you see it. Look right here between the mandibles. You can see her extend her mouth parts, her tongue basically, and actually lick my finger. The stinger is at the tip of the abdomen. If we zoom in to just the stinger in this shot, you can see a droplet of venom form when the sting lands that is actually pushed out of the sting shaft. An average fire ant worker has a reservoir containing around 30 nanoliters of venom connected to their sting. Their dosage can vary between ants. A typical sting injects around 0.7 nanoliters of venom. Fire ant stingers are not as heavily barbed as honeybees. So after venom injection, the ant can walk away, pulling out the stinger, and continue on unharmed and able to sting again. But stinging isn't the only behavior that makes fire ants a successful species. They're also really good at collective group level behaviors. Take prey capture for instance. This beetle is 25 times heavier than a single fire ant. Multiple workers have to be recruited to sting the beetle before it succumbs to the ants. Once it's immobilized, they cooperate in dragging the beetle back into their colony. If the beetle is unmovable, the ants have to work together to chop up the larvae into small bits and transport those back to the nest. At a whole colony level, rafting is a collective behavior that fire ants are famous for. In their native range in South America, flooding is pretty common. In response to a flood, an entire colony will emerge from the ground, carrying their eggs, larvae, and pupae. As the water level rises, the ants cling to each other, forming a living raft that their nestmates gather on. They can float like this as a colony for days, until flood waters recede, or they reach higher ground. From individual stings to whole colony rafts, behaviors of the red imported fire ant Solenopsis invicta have helped them become one of the most widespread invasive ant species.